uh, as part of the documentary for CN, David Mattingly also did a special investigative uh, documentary on this with many in-depth interviews looking into the NS NTSB efforts to try to conduct an investigation and also into, you know, David, what some people were saying, you know, there were all kinds of allegations that there had been something shot from the ground, some sort of a rocket, all kinds of conspiracy theories about what might have happened that night. What do you make of this new so-called evidence? Well, let me put it this way. Everything this filmmaker is saying flies in the face of what has become known as the most intense and most meticulous investigation in the history of aviation. This investigation did things that no other investigation ever did before or since. They actually recovered more than 90% of this plane from the bottom of the ocean. They didn't just bring it back to a hangar where they examined it. They gathered these pieces together and actually reassembled this aircraft. Absolutely unheard of in any kind of air disaster uh, investigation. But they did that. I walked through this aircraft that they reassembled. I saw the pieces that they put back together, and I listened to the investigators as they described how painstakingly they went through this aircraft piece by piece, wire by wire, to come to their conclusion that it was a spark that ignited this empty tank that was beneath the aircraft. Now, as far as a missile strike goes, there would have been some telltale signs on the outside of this aircraft. There would have been pockmarks. There would have been a uh, damage that was done from this missile that was very easy to determine. They found no evidence whatsoever that this happened. They found no evidence whatsoever that there was a bomb on board the aircraft. They went into this thinking that it might be terrorism, that it might be some kind of attack. They came away very quickly able to determine that this did not happen. Now, uh, a lot of these conspiracy theories focus on the radar. There was about a dozen radar right. of tapes that were compiled from Long Island at the time that this happened. I was able to see one of them that actually landed in the hands of a retired pilot who was one of the people who believes that this plane was brought down by a missile. I, I watched it with him in his, own, in his own home, and the conversation went just like this. Listen. If this is a missile, we're about 30 seconds away from the explosion. That's right. How does it take a missile 30 seconds to reach that aircraft when it's so close? Well, it, it, I have no explanation for that. We never actually see it cross the path of Flight 800. You don't. You don't see the blip that was supposed to be the missile actually striking the airplane. You don't see it even crossing the path of that airplane. But this is just one piece of the evidence that we examined looking at some of the conspiracy theories that are out there. Now, something this investigation did, it provoked sweeping changes by manufacturer Boeing of these aircraft. And in about three years, all of these aircraft will have been refitted or the new aircraft will have new equipment on that that will prevent this from ever happening again. Now, what won't go away here, Aaron, are these conspiracy theories that seem to ignore the facts that were brought up in this investigation.